Hello and welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. Today I'm going to create a 12 by 12 single page scrapbook layout featuring Close to My Heart's current mix-in paper pack. So you can see on one side I have a whole another color palette as opposed to the opposite side here. And the mix-ins are designed to go along with all of the current paper collections or they can be a standalone pack. I have this really cute picture of my younger son holding a pair of baby goats that are just about a month old. And I was inspired by this pin I saw on Pinterest here. And it's called titled Capture My Heart. And that is just what my son did this day. He just brought these two baby goats into the house, you know, all excited, wanting me to see that he had been working to tame them down. And he was just too cute. And he truly just captured my heart. So. I saw this pin, it was pinned under scrapbook.com, but the web address under there says A-L-E-D scrapbooking kit at tumblr.com. Sometimes it's really fun just to scrap lift a project. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it. It gets you trying new things and it can just be a lot of fun. Um, sometimes when we're stuck in a creative rut, then it's good to um, you know, look for inspiration and try those ideas out for yourself. So you saw there was a really wide variety of colors in this mix-in paper pack. I'm primarily using green. This ombre color is julep and it's our color of the year and it's just a really neat shade of green. It's really pretty. And this strip I'm lying down now is glacier. And then I will be incorporating a little bit of the nectarine cardstock just for a little pop of color. I have my iPad open on the desk next to me and I'm just looking at that pin for a visual reference. I don't have the measurements or anything like that for the project. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And then I'll put my own creative um, twist on the layout. But I really like it, so I'll probably follow it pretty closely. I'm tearing the edge of the papers on the bottom only just to give it a little bit of interest. and. I am going to make a tag and since there's kind of grid lines on this pattern paper it makes it really easy for me to just cut the corners um, you know by hand and so that is a really quick and easy tag there. I used my Cricut to cut out my title here. I like how all the fonts are mixed up and also the colors it adds a lot of interest. The embroidery hoop I just put up in the, or the circle I should say, is the embroidery hoop from one of our current Complete Creativity collections. So I shrunk that down to four inches to fit on this layout. And now before I started hearing everything down, just to add to that fun and playful vibe of this layout, I'm going to doodle with my journaling pen around all the edges. You know, you could do this with a ruler, but you kind of want the casual wavy squiggly line. So just go with it. I've cut the word captured out and it's pretty tiny. So I've put a little bit of glue down and I just sprayed it with water to dilute it just a little bit. I saw my friend Julie Carrier over at the Scrap Zone do this technique um, with diluting it with the water and I do think it works very well. So. Before I put my title down, I wanted to punch a hole just to make that more tag-like. And to add a little bit of layering to that, I'm gonna put this little tab of pattern paper over that hole, and then I will hole punch that again. Just like so. Just gives a little bit more character to our tag. I'll go ahead and get this adhered down, and then I can finish putting my title, the word captured across the tag there. So yeah, using the tweezers and then just sponging on the glue is a great way to work with these really intricate pieces. Um, sometimes when you apply glue directly to the back, it kind of squishes out when you adhere the letters down. So this will avoid that. Now for part of my title, I have this tiny typewriter alphabet set 
and I don't have little alpha tab stickers, so I'm gonna make my own. I want the word you, and I want it to be in little black rectangles, so I'm just going to heat emboss that with white embossing powder and cut them out and make my own. It's nice having the alpha tiles because they're quick and easy, but it seems like I never have enough of the letters that I'm looking for. So stamps are a great investment because you are not going to run out of them. And you can customize them, you know, by changing up the ink and the cardstock and the techniques that you do with them. So my Y, I pushed down a little bit more or too hard and it got a little blurry. So I'm just going to repeat the Y and get those set with my heat gun. And now I'm just going to trim those down to tiny little rectangles. And that's going to be my word, you, for you captured my heart. So I've noticed I've been scrapbooking a lot of single page layouts with only one or two photos lately. And it's really kind of funny because I've been scrapbooking for, gosh, probably 20 years or more. And in the beginning, I had to have two coordinating 12 by 12 layouts. So when you were looking in the album, you know, both sides had to go together and everything had to match and be cohesive. But then in 2014, I completed a Project 365 album where you take a photo of the day. And that is by far one of my favorite photo albums. All those random everyday life moments are really what it's all about. And of course, the big events are very special too. But I just, these little, like, tip, you know, this photo of my son where he was supposed to be out doing his chores so we could get ready to go for the day. And here he comes with two baby goats in tow. And so I just grabbed my phone and snapped a picture. And, you know, it was just a moment in time, but it's an awesome memory. So I'm really curious to know. Leave me a comment and let me know. Are you guys a double page scrapbook layout kind of a person or single page? You know, which do you prefer? Do you go back and forth like I do? Of course, when there's only one or two photos on the layout, that leaves lots of room for all the fun embellishments. So I can't figure out where to put the word heart. I don't really like it on the tag. It feels like it's kind of choked down. Um, you know, there's not much room. So I move it down here, but then I'm feeling like there needs to be something on the tag. So I spotted this little zip strip, kind of a border strip from the mix-in pack. And that's perfect because I wanted to incorporate more of the nectarine as well. So now I'm going to want to put it up in that right-hand corner. So I'm just thinking of some ways to incorporate a little pop of the nectarine up there to carry that color around the layout. So I'll go ahead and get these adhered while I'm brainstorming on what to do up there. And then I remembered I have, since it's, you know, you captured my heart, I have a brand new stamp set and it has some thin cut hearts in it. So I thought, oh, perfect. I will die cut some hearts and add those to my layout. So here's that stamp set and coordinating dies. It's I Choose You and it makes a little jar of candy hearts so cute and it goes along with our spinner card. So stay tuned. You're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming video on our new spinner cards. So those are going to be a ton of fun. But what I'm doing is just sanding these hearts down. Since um, our cardstock is two-toned, I've cut them out in you know, the light and the dark side, just add a little bit of contrast. And now I'm going to doodle lines. So I looked back at the original layout I was scrap lifting and they have uh, circles hanging down instead of hearts. So I switched it up just a little bit, but it's a similar look. And now I'm going to pop those hearts up on foam adhesive. I have these tiny little adhesive squares that are perfect. So I'll just get one on the back of each of these and I'll just add a little dimension and lift these hearts up off the page a little bit. I love these little heart dies. I think they're so cute and I know I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of these. So I'm just getting the last one adhered and then I want to add a little bit more detail 
to this little embellishment cluster, so I'm going to add some silver brads. It seems like brads are making a comeback, and I'm super happy about that because I love brads. They're so quick and easy, and I like the metal that it, um, you know, the different elements that you can add to your paper. So I'm just folding over the back side, and a little trick I learned, so they slide into your page protector without getting hung up. You just put a little washi tape over the back side there, and it'll slide right into your page protector. So I created these two little tags on my computer and I'm going to journal around the edge there. One says sweet boy and the other one says love this kid and I am going to put these over on the side of the embroidery hoop there just like so and I wanted to incorporate more of these hearts and I thought you know was kind of having a hard time figuring out where to place them so I tried down there and then move them up there not sure maybe less is more so I just put a couple up there by my circle and decide they look better spaced out there. And then I'll just get everything tacked down, add a few more foam embellishments so these hearts are popped up as well. And then my little journaling strip words I'll just tape down with my tape runner. At the end I'll show you both layouts, the one from Pinterest and, that I scrap lifted and this one side by side so you can see the similarities. And now I just think it needs a little bit of um, squiggles around, kind of more of a doodly look. So in each corner kind of offset, I'm just adding some little squiggles around the doodle line there. Nothing fancy, but it does add a lot of interest. And I like the way that looks, but now I'm thinking I need a little bit of journaling. So I'm just going to pencil in a few lines with my T-square ruler and then just handwrite some quick journaling about this photo. And I think eh, three lines is not enough. I better add one more. I usually like to do strip journaling because I don't like my handwriting, but I know it's important to incorporate our handwriting in our photo albums. I know our you know, future generations are going to want to see that, I'm sure, even though it's sloppy. So we're just about done, but I can't resist adding a little splatter. So I have the Julep Shimmer Pen, and I'm just blocking off where I don't want the splatter, and I'm just, I need to moisten the tip a little bit more, and I can add, you know, just by tapping it, you can get big splatters or just light, misty little splatters. And this is a shimmer pen, so along with the splatters, you get a little sparkle on there as well, which is a really cool look. So just kind of going around, I have my all-purpose mat down to protect my work surface, and I decide I want a few more larger splatters in this lower left corner. So I just kind of go back and add a few of those. So here is my finished page and I just love the fun, playful vibe of this layout and the cheerful color palette from the mix-in paper pack. And here in a minute I'll show you the original pin It'll be on the left there and then my layout on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and say my son with the baby goats is cuter than that cat. But since I'm his mom, I think I'm kind of biased. After these still shots, I will leave a link to more scrapbooking videos that you may enjoy. So be sure to check those out for more inspiration. And for more information, you can always visit my blog at craftyconceptswitherin.com. You can check the description box below for all of the products that I used in today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.